Okay, hello, ladies. Uh, it's nice to have you here in this session, um, which uh, basically is a very important session because it's going to uh, uh, discuss how companies and organizations are working to build their workforce skills so that they can protect and defend their organizations from cybersecurity attacks and incidents. And um, I'm delighted to have you here because you are all so experienced in this field. Uh, of course, as you know, this is a very challenging field for two reasons. One is uh, the, the skills shortages in cybersecurity, which uh, is currently estimated at around 4% worldwide of unfulfilled cybersecurity roles. And the second is the speed with which uh, technology and cyber attacks are evolving. So these are the two issues that companies are grappling with. And to address them, on the one hand, they have to build uh, human technical capabilities and workforce skills. And that comes with a host of issues uh, that deal with uh, recruiting uh, the right people with the right skills, uh, building uh, the interest among uh, students and uh, university students to uh, appreciate cybersecurity not only as a lucrative profession, but also as a value add to their existing professions. And of course, training them with the right skills and uh, making sure that uh, after they've been trained, that they stay in the organization and that, they're, um, that they don't fly away. So you have to develop retention plans and career planning so that uh, the staff are able to grow and progress in their own career streams. And of course, on the other hand, to address the second challenge, is basically innovation, how to uh, foster a climate of uh, change, an open way of thinking, an open, uh, a different way of doing things, developing new responses to uh, new threats, attracting diversity, uh, changing deep-rooted cultures. So these are the two issues that basically we'll, we'll be talking about. And um, I'd like to uh, introduce our first panelist, who is Dr. Mary. Hello, Dr. Mary from the United Kingdom. Hello, hi. Hi, Dr. Mary, uh, you are the cyber director of uh, BAE Systems, which is basically a, a, a one of the largest defense companies around the world. And uh, uh, as a result, you have clients in the military and in, in the government and high sensitive profile cyber targets. Uh, and you're on the front line of very sophisticated cybersecurity attacks. So what does your company do? And what do you do, having experience leading uh, cybersecurity professionals, to uh, ensure that your organization keeps up with uh, evolving threats and cybersecurity challenges? And how do you ensure that your employees' skills are up to date? So the, the first thing is really to realize that it's always changing. That, yeah, that, yeah. That, that what attackers are doing and how, the, and how their techniques are developing are just changing all the time. Uh, and at the same time, the technologies that we work with as a, as a large defense company and that our clients work with are also changing and they have to for, for mm -hmm. companies to remain competitive in the market. So you almost need to have that mindset of change is okay, change is normal. I'm expecting it to change. I can't have a plan that goes out for five years and I just stick rigidly to it. And if something changes, I've failed. That's the, totally the wrong mindset. It's that mindset of I'm planning for it to change and how do I do that? So, so part of it's about keeping that view on what is happening out there and encouraging that. And, um, and that's around discipline of, of tracking the threat actors and, and what they're doing and tracking the technology changes and, and writing those up in reports and sharing them. Uh, so there's sort of the disciplined angle of it, but there's also uh, those informal interactions that you need to encourage. So, so I have objectives on all of my team that they go out and have conversations, have coffee, meet up for lunch, people from uh, a, a range of industries. They may be competitors, they may be people like us, they, and, and I want them to meet people not like us as well. Mm. So they're talking about what's going on in the marketplace, how other people are dealing with the issues, what sort of solutions they're exploring. 
um, and really listening hard when they're having those conversations. So they're not trying to hear what they want to hear. They're hearing what's going on out there. Uh, and then writing those up in really simple, quick reports, and then really importantly sharing those because it's no good individuals just having the conversation. So to make it sink in, you've got to share it and, and repeat it outwards to kind of process it in your head. So uh, getting them to talk to the rest of the team about the different people they've been talking to. And in doing that, we're bringing that creativity in all the time um, from other angles. I guess that's the external creativity. Internally, I'm a really strong believer that you can't be creative without diversity. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and that means diversity cognitively in the way that we think. It means diversity between men and women, between different cultures, and really encouraging that into the team and creating in all the teams that we have that safe place, that place where you can go, I've had this crazy idea or this funny thought, what do you think? And making sure that when people bring that up, you go, wow, that's great, let's talk about that. And if it turns out to be a terrible idea, that's okay, that's fine, that's that's kind of part of the process. Um, you know, a lot of these things about creating this culture for change and, and culture for creativity, it's not unique to cyber, but I think it's just especially important in cybersecurity that you have it because you are in this constant battle with very well-funded, very capable adversaries and it's you know it's important stuff it's it's important for the security of our nations the security of our countries the prosperity of the economy so we better get it right oh brilliant you are getting the formula of innovation i must say quite right perfect you are encouraging your uh, uh, employees to stand boundaries um uh, talk listen and uh, one of the key points that you mentioned is that uh, you make a you make them write it down and then explain it. And this is one of the key measures of uh, making uh, people understand their content and their industry and whatever they're dealing with in, in a very uh, uh, efficient manner. That's, that's brilliant. Honestly, you've hit on all the innovative, uh, if there's a formula for innovation, you've hit on all the angles. So thank you, Dr. Mary. Thank you. Now I'm going to uh, move on to our second speaker who is uh, Dr. Nahla Balushi. How are you, Doctor? Nice to have you here. Uh, Nahla is uh, head of the information security management team at the Central Bank of Oman. And uh, uh, she has had uh, 20 years of experience in information security, raising awareness about the importance uh, of information security by linking an organization's strategic objectives with, uh, with, uh, with uh, information security objectives. Um, Dr. Uh, uh, Nahla, um, please, if you could just uh, tell us a little bit about how your organization is keeping abreast with evolving uh, threats and uh, technologies, and what are you doing to link the information, uh, uh, information security objectives with the uh, strategic objectives of the organization? Thank you very much Rafa, for the introduction. Um, first, I would like to say that, you know, I need again to emphasize on what Dr. Mary said with regard to the threat landscape. Uh, you know, it is evolving, it is changing, and we should always uh, keep kind of um, a knowledge and understanding of what is happening around us. Uh, when it comes to cybersecurity, it's not the case that you are looking to like, you know, technology issues, you are looking for vulnerabilities in systems maybe, it's not that. You have also to look at the geopolitical aspect. Sometimes, uh, as we know, some of these uh, attacks are maybe kind of state nation sponsored. Sometimes it is the case that uh, there is a wave of, of, of attacks and, and we should consider that we might be hit also with that specific wave of attacks. I have noticed uh, in the last few years that every year we have a pattern of, of, of attacks, okay? So I have noticed that in one year you see that ransomware is, is the talk of everybody who is in cybersecurity. Mm. In a different year, it is a, a different malware which has nothing, there is nothing except, you know, the idea of, you know, sabotage and just ruining things with, with, with really no much of purpose. So in our organization, what, what 
I think uh, like, you know, what we need to do is um, first we need to embrace security by design in each and every aspect of the infrastructure. Mm -hmm. uh, the other thing which is really very important is uh, we need to look into uh, the component of security in each and every project we have, but not at the very late stages, because I think this is the mistake which was done in the like you know previous years, where people come and say, okay, um, we have a project, we are almost toward the end, let's check what are the security requirements. At that stage, it's very late to determine what you need. Mm -hmm. So what we did in our organization, as an example, is we say that. For you to start a project, you need to accomplish X, Y, Z of requirements, of cybersecurity requirements, and, and that really helped. So this is another thing. Um, also, the governance. When we talk about governance structure, having a proper key performance indicators related to cybersecurity, it really helps because you keep track, and at the same time, you are also uh, passing that knowledge to the board level because you are following some specific KPIs, they need to know what is happening with, with regard to that. So you have that information. Um, I feel like uh, sometimes, um, I mean, sorry, previously, uh, boards were not really interested into security. They thought that it is just an element where, you know, it is not the core business. Yeah, this is not the case. Yeah, this is not the case these days because I, we feel like we are safe and secure. And I can say from my, you know, this is my personal opinion, there is no organization which is 100% secure. Mm -hmm. I mean, at some point you will find a mistake. It could be that you have a perfect technology in place, but a mistake is like, you know, a phishing email. You just click something and that's it. So it is, it's also human behavior. So the aspects are really kind of uh, complicated. It is not just technology, you need to think about your people. Um, you need to raise the level of the awareness to, to make sure that you are abreast of like, you know, all these um, uh, threats in general. So what we do, awareness, when I say awareness, it is the two parts to awareness. Awareness uh, of, of your security staff, uh, your, your team, where they are, they know what is happening uh, in the world. They know that there is, let's say, uh, we are, let's talk about what is happening now, US elections. So there is something happening. So this information is relevant also to cybersecurity. When it comes to the other part, it's your, your, your organization as a whole. They need to have that um, cybersecurity kind of uh, awareness, general awareness. You know, you receive something, uh, how do you deal with it? Do you click? Um, do you send it to someone? And and good that what we, what we have done, we have um, uh, used one of the uh, CBTs, uh, computer-based training, and it really helped because there were some sort of games, so people were kind of interactive. So all these things helped us to kind of be aware of, of, of what is happening uh, in general in the cyberspace. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, um, so what would you recommend to the audience as best practice uh, in, 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 in this field? Okay. You have, um... Yeah, what I recommend that um, we should, uh, when it comes to cybersecurity, we should not look only at what technology I have, okay? Because sometimes the concentration goes to the technology without really looking at the other aspects. So. Look at the technology, yes, it is important, but what if you have the right technology, but you don't have the right skills to deal with this technology? Mm -hmm. uh, so people is very important. People, it comes to skills when it comes to the cybersecurity stuff, and also people, it comes to the organization as a general. And mm -hmm. then also having proper processes in place. So um, um, it, it's, it's a chain, basically. So uh, having the technology on its own will not really help. Having the people without the needed technology also is, so we need a balance between the three. Wonderful, wonderful. This is really amazing, uh, Nahla. It's really lovely. You mentioned a very interesting point about uh, uh, being aware of geopolitical events. Because exactly. they tend to influence 
the attacks on an organization. Yes. And is this uh, one of the procedures that you have in the central bank is to, is to keep abreast of what's going out there? Or is this something that you personally uh, have, uh, have, um, uh, have the intuition to look out for? Uh, well, it's not a procedure, to be honest with you. It is uh, me encouraging my team to always look out for information and discussing that information. So, for example, we do have a group on the on WhatsApp. So if there is an event or something, I share information with them. And then we have that kind of healthy discussion about it. Um, you know, do you think that this might impact us? If yes, then what we need to do? So you, you need to always kind of think think ahead when it comes yeah. to cybersecurity. Yes. Bravo. This is really, really fascinating. Thank you, Nahla. Thank you. Now I'm going to uh, move on to my third speaker, who is uh, Basma Jdea. Hello, Basma. Uh, hi, Wafa. Engineer Basma is the director of uh, National Strategic uh, Cybersecurity Studies in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. She is a leading efforts to develop a cybersecurity ecosystem in line with, uh, with the kingdom's digitization vision. Am I correct? Uh, yeah, yes, Wafa. So basically, um, at the National Cybersecurity Authority of GM for the Center for Cybersecurity Strategic Studies, as you have mentioned. Okay, thank you. I would like to talk about uh, innovation in, in Saudi Arabia and particularly focusing on the role of, uh, uh, of diversity. How does diversity play a role in promoting innovation in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia? Um, first of all, I'd like to thank the organizers for, uh, for having me in this uh, panel with those brilliant ladies that we have here and along the, uh, the other representation in the conference. I think what you've mentioned is a very interesting point when it comes to innovation and how diversity play a role, play a role in that. In fact, uh, statistics, statistics has shown that diversity does not only promote innovation, but also it has a positive correlation with the economic growth, where it has showed that 45% of organizations who have diversity witnessed a growth in their market share. And according to statistics, um, women currently make up approximately 24% of the cybersecurity workforce worldwide. And that shows the need to empower women to take the opportunities in, to be in the cybersecurity sector. In fact, in Saudi, we have the women representation in cyber and ICT positively correlated with the non-oil uh, GDP growth in the kingdom, where in recent years that has doubled with, with the increase of the diversity with their representation. In Saudi, for example, we have very competitive universities that boost impressive and fast growing female enrollment and STEM programs and women representation being half of all graduate students in Saudi, representing around 54% uh, uh, of those graduates uh, coming from STEM field and IT curricula playing in a great uh, share of that which is usually an interested field related to cyber domain, um, as, as uh, my colleagues has mentioned, where it's expanding when it comes to the scope and the complexity. And uh, when we look at those percentages where um, in our region, in Saudi in particular, uh, we see that 46 of the representation are from female, where in other countries uh, like US percentage reached um, around 16%. But I think there's a very important aspect here. So despite this progress towards the on-campus equality of representation, the diversity that we have, female graduates of such programs are still not representative in the workforce. Mm -hmm. While female pioneers like what we have here, the key representation are pleasing a trail of those who follow them and follow their footsteps, breaking the glass ceiling of the cybersecurity field is still not without its hurdle. I believe uh, we're having more women into the cybersecurity position is best answered by looking into mainly three challenges that we need to overcome. And this is what you have mentioned earlier, Wafa, in alignment to the attraction, identification, development of the skills, and also retention is very important aspects looking into having more um, female in the cybersecurity field. When we look into attraction, um, 
it is really about how we're making uh, or marketing cybersecurity to girls and women and what exactly does that field is bringing uh, to them. Right now, we think cybersecurity has an identity problem that we need to promote the advantages that cyber is bringing to the career of those uh, women. I think it is, as cybersecurity professionals, it is our job uh, to look into solving some of the hardest technology problems. As uh, Dr. Nahla has mentioned, cybersecurity is not only a technology problem, but it is beyond that. So as a professional, it is part of our responsibility in looking how we could promote further diversity in the field. We need all the talent. We need people who dare to think differently. As Dr. Mary has mentioned, uh, we need to look into people who can uh, bring different perspectives, have different backgrounds and experiences, different genders, because it is with that mix, all of those together, that we get the creativity and innovation we desperately need in a, in a challenging field like the cybersecurity space. In alignment with that, um, earlier in this year and during the, the Global Cybersecurity Forum, the National, Securities, the National Cybersecurity Authority has announced two global initiatives that were instituted by His Royal Highness Prince Mohammed bin Salman. The first initiative focusing on saving children in the cyberspace. And the second one, particularly looking into women empowerment and cybersecurity, which is honestly a realization of the value that women bring to better secure the cyber space. The initiatives is focusing into enabling women. As such, it's put forward key elements uh, with the aim to bridge the gender gap in the cybersecurity across the globe to accelerate the efforts that is being done by all organizations to exclusively and effectively enhance the cyber resilience and foster the future of women in the cyber space and in the workforce representation and expands their interest in the cybersecurity career. The second aspect is looking into how we could advance the professional development of female and the cybersecurity professional and to expand their uh, expand the human capital resources bridging the gap in the cybersecurity workforce and bringing further diversity in the field. The third element which is mainly focusing on empowering women to hold an active leadership role driving the cybersecurity cyberspace. Another aspect that we've worked on and focused on is basically when it comes to building cybersecurity capability where NCA has launched the um, Saudi cybersecurity workforce framework, which is a categorization of the cybersecurity work that defines certain job rules with their categories set of requirements and expected job activities with the aim that that would serve as a reference model and guidelines that will help us in Saudi and definitely could be used um, other, world, uh, other places in the world into preparing, developing, recruiting, and promoting, and definitely managing the cybersecurity workforce. Um, I think Wafa also, on the other hand, there are certain measures that organizations need to look into to support them promote uh, diversity and foster the culture of innovation within their organization. As Dr. Mary has mentioned, we need to create an environment that facilitates solving cybersecurity challenges that indeed needs innovative solutions and ideas to overcome such challenges. We need to have a worldwide network of uh, female, specifically uh, cybersecurity professionals, and this is what we have here is a key example that will enhance our global capacity building efforts and cyber resilience with bringing diversity into that. I think it is very important also that we look into increasing the outreach to the young girls, steering them towards cyber careers in collaboration with a key stakeholders, with the private and public sector, that would result into um, regional and uh, hopefully international level of programs. One, one other aspect, uh, I think Dr. Mali also referred to that, uh, which is when it comes to the mentorship. Uh, mentorship is very important that we need to bring into our organization and various levels and the hierarchy of the organization that would support female recruitment and upward mobility in the cyber world. I think it is, it is very important for all members within the organization to be encouraged to set their goals, contribute to ideas, identify the barriers that inhibit their, uh, their success and solving key issues. It is 
uh, it is that would support us definitely to have a responsive um, activation towards solving the uh, the ever changing problems of the cybersecurity challenges that that we are facing. Um, and one last thought, which is very important that we need to look into, I think visibility is powerful insofar that demonstrates that industry wider commitment to diversity and giving a platform to role model who look and think like the exceeding workforce. Women in cybersecurity is definitely the voice to support and address the concerns of the next generations of the female specializing in cybersecurity, sharing their success stories, promoting further diversity and innovation, hopefully in the cybersecurity field. Thank you, thank you. That's fascinating, uh, Basma. This is really an eye-opening uh, presentation and I'm very impressed with the initiatives uh, of Saudi Arabia. They are really touching on uh, key issues here. Thank you so much. Um, um, I, I think when, uh, according to Price uh, Waterhouse Cooper, they mentioned that uh, one of the reasons why uh, women's participation in the workforce in general, one of the barriers is that they don't have uh, um, career pathways uh, development so that they could, if they, if they occupy a position, they want to know that they can progress in this position. You can start as a level one in cybersecurity penetration tester, for example, you would want to know that you're receiving the needed uh, skills and training that would enable you to progress in your field. And I'm very happy that uh, you are mentioning all these points in, in your strategies and particularly in relation to mentoring and uh, women's networks and, uh, and, and developing retention plans and uh, flexible um, uh, cybersecurity skills frameworks. That's really, really, really nice. Thank you, thank you. And uh, now I'm going to uh, introduce our uh, fourth uh, panelist, who is uh, Natalia Spinu. Natalia is, uh, how are you, Natalia? Nice to have you with us. Natalia is the director of CERT in Moldova. She, uh, she has been involved in various uh, national uh, cybersecurity initiatives, uh, key of which include uh, uh, developing joint initiatives with universities so that they could uh, build the workforce skills of, uh, uh, of tomorrow. So uh, Natalia, my question is, uh, is as follows. You are looking into the future when it comes to developing uh, cybersecurity uh, skills that meet industry requirements. Could you please tell us a little bit about your experience in this field and what are your key findings? And if you would recommend uh, best practice in this field, that would be highly appreciated. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, and uh, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Rim, for uh, inviting me here and also to be part of this uh, um, group of um, women in cybersecurity in the Middle East. Um, uh, also, uh, I'm already inspired by the women who are in this uh, panelist. I was listening uh, very uh, carefully what they're uh, saying, and uh, even I, did, I took some notes, you know, it's really very impressive the experience and what you're doing in uh, your own country. Um, and uh, yes, you're right. Uh, I'm uh, quite, uh, you know, um, energetic, I would say, and dynamic in this field, and especially working with the university, maybe because I came in this field, maybe not in a, a traditional way. Usually, you know, when people, uh, they graduate from uh, engineer or math. I came uh, in a no in not in a normal way. So uh, my first time I've heard about cybersecurity, I was doing my uh, master program in uh, Geneva in international relations. So I was uh, yeah. Uh, and mentioned exactly. So uh, cybersecurity, it's not about uh, technology, it's already a geopolitical uh, prob uh, problem. And we have a lot of uh, cyber uh, diplomats already trying to, you know, to negotiate and to have um, a balance. Yes, it's true. So in that time, um, I, um, I was thinking, wow, it's a really very hot topic, uh, cybersecurity. And um, I came back uh, uh, to work and I went back to school. So uh, here we are, my collaboration with the university, I've realized that cybersecurity is really a very interesting uh, uh, subject. Also, it's a very dynamic and uh, also it's a very complicated. So uh, since then I started to collaborate with them because I've, uh, I've uh, noticed in uh, my office, we have this uh, uh, gap between technical people and the managers. Someone mm -hmm. 
in the speech uh, that the board, the directors, and uh, usually we need their support. We need to we need them to understand uh, these uh, uh, important uh, issues and all these risks. And also we need them to allocate the budget, right? Because security it's about uh, money. It costs uh, not only uh, to invest, but also in case of an uh, attack. Uh, uh, it costs you a lot. And we have seen um, the last uh, years how many data breaches and uh, um, how much it costs your business. And you can disappear you know, from the screen. So that's why it's really important to build this, uh, uh, this uh, gap. Uh, so um, I've, uh, my first initiative was uh, to open a laboratory within the university because I've realized uh, how uh, uh, difficult it is to employ uh, a smart or, let's say, a good expert, and especially uh, working for the government. You know the reality. We are not uh, paying the same salary as the private sector is uh, paying, so we cannot compete with them. On the other hand, we, have, uh, uh, we are employing uh, smart, young uh, experts, and then very quickly they are leaving uh, and they are working, uh, they are leaving uh, in the private uh, sector where they are uh, going abroad, working for, for uh, international community. So it was very difficult how to motivate them. So my first initiative was to develop this uh, cyber lab where we could meet. So it was like a small platform where people with, um, with a passion for this field for cybersecurity, where they could uh, test uh, their uh, capacity, and uh, then we could employ them. So it was really very interesting. So we were doing different kind of uh, uh, red blue teams, uh, um, capture the flags. So it was really very interesting. Awesome. Exactly. So I like the environment because uh, people, you know, um, uh, working in this field, they, they are very creative as um, other uh, panelists, they mentioned that uh, working in this field, you need to be uh, you need to be you need to have passion for this field also you need to be very curious and you need to do a lot of work so it's not uh, there is not a single uh, recommendations like you graduate from a from a university where you have uh, some two other uh, certificates and you are done success no way it's a lot of work and as um, um, we have seen how many how these threats are evolving how fast and imagine even for private sector, it's so difficult to, to answer to all these uh, threats. That's so dynamic and so challenging. Yeah. In that lab, that it's really very, uh, very dynamic, interesting. So um, I came to another initiative. So uh, within the Cybersecurity Month in October, just to finish this awareness month. So we launched a platform. It's a Moldovan Cybersecurity Week. So it's a one week with a lot of events, a lot of uh, so the first day it's a conference where we talk uh, at the highest level, uh, having a prime minister, uh, all his cabinet and the private sector, academia, where we share and where we learn from each other because we understood and we realized that how important it is to, you know, is to share it. It's, um, we still have this mentality that if you have a problem, you don't have to talk about that problem. Yeah. Yeah. But cyberspace because if your boss or if your employer they don't talk about that uh, problem you will know from news you know because uh, um, it's um, uh, right now everything is there so uh, uh, the problem is how how you communicate how you share it and it's not uh, a news uh, that you uh, you'll be attacked where your data will be breached but it's uh, uh, the question is how fast do you answer to that incident? Or how, uh, what is your uh, business continue plan? Uh, or with whom you talk? Do you have an um, um, organization or do you have a partner who can help you, you know, to, uh, to solve that uh, problem or with whom you can, uh, you, you can collaborate? So I think this uh, platform, it's really a successful. Uh, so it's not a national, it's a regional. So uh, uh, in cybersecurity, I think it's really very important to have uh, this kind of uh, uh, community. As it is uh, Middle East, the woman in cybersecurity in the Middle East. And you, every day we got this uh, boom, boom, boom in our uh, phones, right? With the news where is something going on or there is a workshop or it's a conference. Um, uh, because it's too much. It's too much. There's so much information, you know. So it's really very important to hear from the best experts, you know, from uh, uh, from countries who implemented already. And you don't have to implement to in, to invent the wheel because there is no time, you know. Things are moving. Yeah. Fast. 
and they're changing so fast. And what really is scaring me, um, I think one of the uh, uh, biggest challenge of organizations, and now I'm, I'm talking here about the government, but also uh, um, private sector and, specific, and specifically university, the academia, the, the speed we are moving so slow. Because yeah. we have a lot of organizations, and especially the government uh, sector, uh, we are still, so we have been uh, developed in 19th century, right? So we are almost 21st century. So we are having all this, uh, we are using all these systems, you know, uh, we have all these uh, um, uh, devices. And how many organizations, how many ministers, they have a policy on bringing your own device? So we are talking about uh, security on people, you know, where they don't respect the, the, the minimum uh, uh, rules or this uh, cyber hygiene, you know? Yes, yes. So starting from here, that's why it's really very important to develop these uh, pro, um, uh, programs uh, together with the university on cyber hygiene to educate everyone. Because cyber, it's not only a problem of the IT guy within your organization, it's yes. everyone's problem. And we all have the same problem and we all, all as a community, as an entire world, we have to come together and to contribute to find the right solution, how to answer. And specifically after this uh, um, uh, pandemia, we've seen how important it is to have a plan, like sending your people or your employee home. Uh, are you are your organization ready? Uh, do they have uh, uh, laptops, VPNs? Uh, uh, how secure is your, uh, um, your organization's data? So it's really very complicated and only together. That's why it with the university, working with the university and already uh, thinking of new curriculum, you know, because it's, um, uh, as I said, it's moving so slow. And on the other hand, we see how these hackers and bad guys, how fast they are moving. And I think, uh, um, uh, they are so flexible and also they are so curious. They want to learn new things. They want to see, they want to discover. Maybe because uh, behind is the uh, um, financial reasons, you know, they're thinking how to earn uh, more money, right? So cyber criminals. Uh, that's why uh, uh, we think uh, that we have to integrate uh, the cybersecurity into uh, business uh, processes. It's not something separate. We have to think already to allocate the budget. We need to train everyone to be aware because um, uh, someone also mentioned that uh, uh, invest in technology, it's not the solution because we have still human beings working within your organizations. Mm. And 10 years ago, we were talking, we were talking and the reports, they were saying that in 10 years, we'll have a lot of new jobs. And I was thinking that the artificial intelligence will replace, you know, and people, they were scared, like we will uh, not have jobs. We have to think a little bit different and to see as opportunities, not as a challenge. So uh, with that, I think um, I would, uh, we are open with the, with the, to collaborate and to have a good uh, collaboration with the international community, with the uh, in regional, international, because only working together we can have a better uh, better system. system. Yes, that is. Thank you, thank you, Natalia. This is really amazing. It's uh, it's really lovely, and I think I'd like to pick up on one of the points you mentioned, which I think is very important, and I would like to address this point to uh, Dr. Mary and uh, Dr. Nahla because they work in big organizations like uh, BAE and the Central Bank of Oman. Usually, big organizations uh, are have the reputation of uh, of uh, uh, of making introducing new procedures very difficult. They're slow to react, and uh, and and how do you balance this uh, out between how do you balance between innovation, introducing a new way of work and a new way of thinking, with uh, without compromising uh, or with compromising an organization's security procedures. So, uh, if uh, shall, shall I go with uh, with uh, Dr. Mary first? Sure, yeah. Uh, you're right that mm. traditionally big organisations have struggled with just making change fast and 
And for our customers, sometimes one of the reasons they come to us is that we're kind of a safe bet that, that, that they know things will work. So we we have to maintain that, which is all about the testing and the processes and the procedures and the checks and balances that you put in place. But that's exactly the stuff that slows it down as well as make sure it's a safe bet. So uh, what we try to do is think really hard about what, how we inject the creative spirit into it and some of it's about the things I was talking about earlier with those conversations externally um, there's but there's some formal things that we've put in place really to make sure that we are um, getting the change in quick enough so a couple of things um, one we try to work with SMEs so small and medium enterprises uh, a lot and we do that consciously. So we work with organizations. There's, there's so many out there, actually, it's kind of a full time job to scan what's going on in these exciting organizations and pull in the best of them into what we're doing. So we work with organizations who are scanning that for us. Mm. Um, there's a few out there and um, Cylon is one of them. Uh, and they tell us about the most exciting startups that are happening and put them in touch with those. We mentor them. So there's kind of something for them as well. Mm -hmm. um, and teach them about the market, but we help, we take some of their solutions out to our customers and use them ourselves. So that's one aspect. Uh, another aspect is we deliberately invest in a team called the Futures Team. And their entire purpose of that team is to think about what next, what's the way out stuff, the exciting stuff that we can do. And we've actually had spin outs from that team. So we spun out a startup company called Soc OS last year, um, which developed a technology uh, to try and reduce the workload of SOC analysts actually, and um, prioritize the alerts for them. We recognized that in BAE, we couldn't develop that solution as fast as it needed to be developed for the marketplace. Mm -hmm. uh, so we sold it out spun it out got vc investment for it we still hold a stake in it we follow them closely i was chatting to them the other day but they've got that entrepreneurial spirit they're let loose from all of the restrictions that bae has and they can go do their thing and succeed and they're absolutely fantastic and and do you know that the glow if you like that comes from having done that with an organization actually comes back into bae itself so that excitement that that we we've created this spin out and the energy that comes from them comes back into what we do internally which is really lovely oh lovely yes yes indeed okay thank you and uh dr nahla as with the pandemic impacting each and every aspect of our lives as we were discussing prior to start the this session um things also changed with when it comes to how people work most of the people started to be mobile um, sometimes during the year, it, like, you know, there were some restrictions to moving around. So people had to work from home. Um, so we had to be kind of um, very, very flexible to that. Um, I know it's always the case when you talk about cybersecurity, people think that, you know, these people are always trying to block everything. They are trying to disable everything, but it's not the case. It is just a matter of, you know, trying to protect uh, everything around us. Um, as Dr. Mary mentioned, uh, maybe there, there are two different um, angles to this. Uh, Dr. Mary is coming from uh, a company with customers. Uh, and in my case, it, it might be that I'm the customer, uh, you know, because we, we, on the other hand, use some, some of the tools available in the market. So what we have done just just to make sure that uh, people don't lose the momentum. Um, we, we try to be flexible. People manage to do what they are, what they are supposed to do while even being um, uh, back at home. Mm. Uh, we try to employ a few technologies which, which can help us. Example, for example, mobile device management, where we try to create a secure environment for those users. Um, we have uh, tried to make sure like, you know, whatever, um, as, as mentioned previously, uh, that, you know, now the, the notion is like, you know, bring your own device, how we can protect that device. As I said, let's, let's have some solutions to make sure that people are still working, but, uh, but, but without impacting the security. Uh, one of the important aspects as well is um, the, uh, maybe I, that is, we, we didn't come across this uh, in this session, 
is the incidence response planning. Um, there is a whole process around incident response. And if we have noticed that during this pandemic, things changed. So it was really important to go back and check, um, are we following this incident response process as it, as it is, or things need to change as well, just to accommodate uh, also the changes in everything we do, we do. So testing that at this stage is really important. Uh, patching your infrastructure again is important because now, um, as mentioned by, by Natalie, it's like people, uh, sorry, hackers are always trying to create new things. Um, they, are, they are very active. Um, uh, some of these hackers are like funded by, by big entities maybe. So they do have that kind of investment to, to make sure that they come up with something uh, really unbeatable. So, um, you know, you, having your, your infrastructure being patched and, and always ensuring that it's really important as well. Um, I mentioned awareness previously. Um, one of the aspects is the social engineering, the impact of social engineering, especially, especially at this stage. Um, I can say that it's always now, um, it's, it's, it's not uh, fishing, but you can say that it's a spear fishing. So they are trying to kind of, uh, consider uh, the highly ranked people in the organization and, and try to kind of try to, to, to communicate with them and, and, and get some, some, some sort of information. So all these things uh, really help improve. And, and also uh, the way we monitor things, you know, we do have uh, SIM solutions, we do have uh, security operation centers, etc. So the, the normal way of doing it is no longer uh, good enough at least yeah. to catch at this stage. So um, uh, behavior changed. Um, as I said, uh, now if, if you notice that there is a connection coming from outside, this is just a, before it was a threat. Nowadays it is something normal because people are trying to connect to the environment from outside. So all these controls in place will help kind of improve uh, the situation. Mm, excellent, excellent. Thank you. I think. Uh... We should be start. Uh, we should start wrapping the session because it's uh, one fifty four. Um, that's been. It's been a lovely session. Very eye opening. Thank you for your contribution. If I can just ask each uh, and every one of you just to give us three takeaways from uh, today's session, that would be really, really amazing. Shall we start with Natalia? Can you give us three takeaways uh, regarding this session, just to wrap things up? Um, learning is the most important thing. <laughs> yep. So learn as much as possible. Uh, share your knowledge with the, with the others because this is really important. And um, as we are in this uh, women in cybersecurity in Middle East, bring as many as possible women in this community because there are so many opportunities. Uh, we need the diversity and also we, um, we know that the women, they, are, um, um, they have a different um, aspect of solving the problems, you know. So we have the real problems and we have to solve them together. Excellent. Thank you. And uh, Engineer Basma, do you, can you give us three takeaways from this session? Yeah, so um, first, thank you for the session. I, um, I'll start with Natalie has ended with is uh, basically, I, can, I think that one, one, one of the key takeaways that we need to look into that it is hard to be what you cannot see. I think that female need to see further role models in the industry that will drive them. And a key message for those who are considering career in the cybersecurity, they, they should be assured that the advancement and longevity are open to them through uh, the adequate representation in the cybersecurity and the diversity that such role is bringing. Um, a very important aspect that has been mentioned when it comes to attracting qualified uh, professionals into the cybersecurity field and how that can be achieved bearing um, their workforce expectations. So professionals, especially when it comes to the female they have certain expectations when they enter any uh, any field. I would say a key message to them that um, anyone who's interested to enter the field, 
um, that usually female are looking into their um, a, a career or work for a career that support their enthusiasm, their curiosity, their creativity, and can show them that they can contribute tangibly to the society. So fortunately, I believe that cybersecurity meets many of those criteria, which provides the hope to the global sh shortage of the four million workforces that you have mentioned uh, at the beginning of the, of the session and how we could support that from a global perspective to bring such uh, new blood and diversity to such a dynamic uh, industry. Um, so I think this is this is one of the key messages that I would like to bring to uh, to our next generation of young females uh, getting into the field. Thank you, thank you. And uh, Nahla, can you give us three takeaways from uh, this session? Uh, I would like just to reiterate on what I have mentioned previously: is uh, cybersecurity is not only about um, technology. Mm -hmm. Again, I, I need to say that again, because it is really important to look at, um, at, at people aspect and also at the processes that you have. Without that, without these three uh, be working together, you really cannot achieve um, much like far in, in, in cybersecurity. So looking at the skills level that you have, trying to improve those skills, and, and it's not always the case that you are looking for the technical skills, just to be specific, as I mentioned previously, the, when, we, when I was talking about the geopolitical uh, aspect of it, um, we really need to, to look at the technical skills and also for the soft skills. Communication skills is really important when, when it comes to cybersecurity. You need to be able to communicate to everyone else what you have seen. Being a technical is good, but it's not good enough um, to be to be in the uh, cybersecurity field. Mm. Excellent, thank you, thank you very much. And uh, Dr. Mary, sure. Um, I mean, following on from what Nala just said, that that idea that cyber is a chain between technical and people and person to person, and having that clarity of roles is so important. When it, when an incident hits and you're all hair on fire, being super clear about who does what and who helps who and what information flows. That's when it comes alive, that link between technology people and people to people. And I loved Basma's, um, the work that she's doing in Saudi with, with setting out that workforce framework and consciously thinking now about how you scale that at a nation state level. That's an issue every country has, is bringing in those skills and, and thinking about how you bring in women. I thought that was, absolutely brilliant and um the mentoring that you talked about is such an important part of that um that building that network of support and sharing the experience and supporting women through it um and that's something that we're, we're creating in BAE as well and trying to build out with partners so I'd love to talk to you some about some of you after this uh session uh but it's uh, and, and in doing that, we share the stories and it's the stories about our background and our journeys and the energy and just the excitement of working in this field that I think will just lure people into the sector and really build it. Thank you. Thank you all so much. It's been uh, really lovely having you here. And uh, I think uh, we, I'm, we can officially uh, put this uh, session to a close. That's it. Thank you. Thank you so much.